the f Ah, Souls-like games. Don't you just love them? To be honest, not so much. Especially when you spend most of that time dying instead of, you know, actually having fun. And that's why I made this video, to help you better understand how the game works, what you should do, and what you should avoid. This is how to play Dark Souls Remastered. Beginner's Guide. Oh wow, this is actually the shortest intro I've ever done for a video. Eh, that's fine. Dark Souls Remastered is no different than any other Souls-like game that it inspired. You explore a huge interconnected world, you fight enemies, you level up, gather weapons, fight more enemies, solve puzzles, kind of, it doesn't actually have puzzles, obtain souls, buy gear, upgrade said gear, throw them away cause you realize they suck, find something better, upgrade them again, level up your character, and then explore more of the world which contains some especially difficult boss battles scattered in that said world. Some of them optional, some of them even missable, which doesn't really matter since you're gonna have to find those bosses if you really want to complete this game, like most people who play these types of games. I'll be talking as if you've played other video games in the past because if you're playing this game as your first ever video game, you may not have a great time. I'm also gonna focus on everything that I think is good for new players to know while at the same time keep it as spoiler free as possible, such as character creation, leveling up, exploration, combat, gear, and Dark Souls' online elements. Dark Souls? And with that, let's start with character creation. Here's the thing about Dark Souls, when it comes to character creation, there are only 4 things that you can change and switch around, but only 2 of them would impact your character. And even then, it'll only impact your experience in a significantly small way down the line. First is Character Class. There are 10 available classes in the Dark Souls character creation screen. 6 focus on fighting through physical means, 3 focus on magical means, and 1 that is made as vanilla as possible. Character classes in this game don't truly exist in a way you would think in an RPG. They don't don't lock your character in a specific combat style. Instead, they only decide the starting skills and equipment your character gets to have. Keyword starting. This means that a person who picks warrior as their class is only called a warrior simply because he spawns in the game with a sword and a shield, along with a beefed up strength stat nothing more. Now, that doesn't mean he can't use spells, and that doesn't mean he's not allowed to use axes or daggers. That just means he simply starts off with a sword and a shield already in hand when the game begins. And that really is it. Now, if you're planning to build a tanky type character, obviously picking a warrior would be the best way to go since you'll already have the standard equipment set, as opposed to a sorcerer who starts off with a dagger. What I'm trying to say is that character class don't really matter unless you already have some sort of idea on how you want your character to feel, or rather how you want your combat to feel. I personally always pick Deprived since it's the most vanilla character with the most basic weapon. It also starts with the most well averaged stat. It may not be as good in terms of combat combat efficiency during the first hours of the game, but this way I can have as much fun as I could experimenting with various builds early in the game, since I haven't really committed to one yet. The second thing that could affect your playthrough, even though it's really not that much, is your starting gift. Starting gifts simply dictate what kind of item you'll start off the adventure with. The reason this doesn't really matter that much is because every single gift you'll see here is not as special as you think. Every single one of these items can be acquired pretty early early on and is easily obtainable as you progress through the game. But it would be nice if you already have one in hand to make things somewhat easier depending on what you're trying to do. Other things in the character creation screen are the choice of gender, what your character would look like, and your name. And absolutely none of this matters in terms of added efficiency. I myself like to style my character to the max even though it's probably gonna be covered by a helmet anyway, but I like to do it nonetheless. But that's just me. Leveling up in Dark Souls is as easy as defeating enemies through combat. Each time you kill an enemy, you'll receive a specific amount of souls depending on which enemy you defeated. Souls work as the game's EXP and are considered as the game's currency. It's used to level up, purchase items, upgrade weapons, ascend gear, enhance armor, and repair equipment. To level up, you need to find a bonfire, light it up if it's not already lit, and kneel on it to level up. Each level you attain uses up a certain amount of souls which marginally goes up for each time you level up. Leveling up once allows you to increase 
a specific attribute by one point for each level, which in turn makes you more effective in regards to what that attribute does. Now, I'm not gonna detail what each attribute does, that will take a long time, and to be honest, this is a beginner's guide. Chances are, you really just wanna know the basic mechanics of the game, without it being too spoilery later on. So here's what you need to know. Vitality affects how many max HP or hit points your character is going to have per point. This is very self-explanatory, the more points you have in this, the more health points you get, and the more blows you can take before dying. Attunement affects the number of attunement slots you can have for pyromancy, sorceries, and miracles. The more attunement slots you have, the more you can use pyromancy, sorceries, and miracles. Endurance controls the player's stamina, maximum equipment load, and their resistance to bleeding. The more endurance you have, the more often you can attack, block, and dodge, as well as how much equipment you can hold before it starts slowing you down. Strength determines how effective you are with strength-based weapons, dexterity determines how effective you are with dexterity-based weapons, intelligence determines how effective you are with sorceries, sorceries and intelligence-based weapons, and fate determines how effective you are with miracles and fate-based weapons. The final attribute is resistance, which primarily increases your physical defense, fire defense, and poison resistance. But most if not all players agree that this is barely an attribute, and there are much more better ways in mitigating damage. Do not level up this attribute unless you know what you're doing. And even then, don't. Obviously, there are a lot of other things that this attribute does, but I think it's better you learn this on your own as you can freely do that before you can even decide to level up your character. The level up screen itself tells you what each attribute does and how it helps your character. A unique mechanic that most Souls-like games have are the respawning of enemies each time you rest in a respawn point, or in this case, a bonfire. Every time you rest on a bonfire, whether it be to fill up your Estus fast, gain your health back, or to level up, every single enemy in the game respawns. Every single one. Well, except for bosses, but that would just be stupid. This gives you an easy way to grind souls by going to the most readily available place with lots of enemies around your level and repeatedly killing them over and over again. However, if you die once while doing this, you'll lose all your souls and you have to retrieve them back before you go die again. If you die, you'll lose all of it permanently. The respawn mechanic is both a good thing and a bad thing as it will also be somewhat difficult to travel and explore without having to encounter enemies you've already killed in the past. But I'm sure you got this. Speaking of exploration, exploration in the world of Dark Souls is what I would say it's one of its easiest aspects. What the f*** did I just say? Exploration is one of its easiest aspects. The world of Dark Souls is interconnected, every level, stage, and area, whether you're in the basement or high above. The map design in this game is incredibly well done, and if you can't find a way to get to where you want to go, there's usually another way for you to get there. You just have to find it. I advise that you explore every cavity in the game. You might find weapons, armors, bonfires, NPCs, items, and all other neat stuff and unique equipment. Be careful as you explore, however, as you will eventually encounter enemies that that are significantly stronger than you. So explore, but be smart about it. A good way to know if you're transitioning to a zone with much more difficult enemies is that the zone is usually separated by fog-like doors. Whatever is on the other side of the door, you won't find out until you actually pass through it. It could be a new location, a bonfire, tougher enemies, a chest, or better yet, and depending on how you see this, a boss. With this in mind, make sure you've spent up all your souls before you pass through a fog door, as you really don't want to encounter a boss while you have lots of souls on you. I'm sure you already know why that is. Dark Souls is a difficult but fair game, and this is where Dark Souls ultimately shines. The combat. You can't hack and slash your way to victory, instead you'll have to treat it like an actual battle. With strategy, and discipline. You can run to a boss if deemed necessary, but more often than not, it's better to just take your time and slowly learn your enemy and study its movesets. Never panic and always try to defeat enemies one by one to avoid getting overwhelmed. You know, kinda like in real life. One of the most important factors when it comes to battles aside from health would be your stamina bar, as it dictates how many actions you can do before your character gets tired. Every time you attack, block, run, or roll, your stamina would deplete, and while it recovers, you'd be vulnerable, and completely limited to the actions you can perform. That's why I recommend fighting one enemy at a time, as it gives you a lot more breathing time to think. 
way better than fighting multiple enemies at once. In relation to combat, the combat animations that you do is directly related to whatever weapon or armor you have at the time, meaning wielding a sword is completely different from wielding an axe. Dark Souls combat actually has a lot of depth, and the combinations of gear you equip provide a lot of uniqueness to your character. Heavy armors make you dodge and roll slowly, while light armors are pretty much weightless. Two-handed weapons are usually equipped with wide range attacks, while one-handed ones are pretty much more precise. Not to mention all the different spells you can cast in the middle of your melee attacks. I usually advise people like myself to just casually learn the game as you play through it. Like I said, Dark Souls is a game about learning and exploration. Experiment with whatever weapon you find throughout the game, and if you find something that you think suits you the best, then keep using that weapon until you find something better. All weapons in the game calculate how much damage they do depending on how many points you've invested on a specific stat. The higher and more focused the stat distribution is, the more damage you'll be able to dish out. Strength and Dexterity for physical damage, and Intelligence and Fate for magical ones. There are certain weapons that benefit from leveling up to completely different weapon scaling stats, but I highly advise not doing this unless you read about your weapons online or you absolutely know what you're doing. This is a smart game and it incentivizes you to be like that as well. Obviously, you can just Google how to beat insert boss name here or what is the best weapon, but that kinda ruins the point of the game, which is learning through trial and error. In regards to armor, what I would suggest you do is to figure out what types of attacks that specific armor resists or sometimes negate altogether. You might even need a specific armor set on one boss and a different one on another. And as such, it's completely normal to keep on switching armors as you play the game. What you do have to check closely is how much weight those armors give. Some armors are extremely heavy to move around in but are usually coupled with great defense and high poise, preventing you from being stunned or staggered when attacked by enemies, as well as bosses. Lighter armor does have less weight, hence being light armor, but they also have much less defensive capabilities in regards to physical attacks. However, they are good against certain magical ones. Pick and choose what you want, mix them all up if you wish, just make sure you're always ready for a fight, especially with all those invaders coming around. Dark Souls, interestingly enough, has an online element. You would think that going around fighting difficult enemies is the most of your concerns, but no. Sometimes you will be invaded by enemies, but luckily it can only happen if you choose to go down this route. I present to you, Humanity. Now, Humanity does a lot of multiple things that could affect various aspects of the game, both offline and online. And if this is your first playthrough, or if you are just in the first few hours of the game, I suggest that you keep this offline, as the online portion of the game might not be what you want to experience early on. Here's the basics of what Humanity does changes your character's appearance to a more appealing state, increases your physical and elemental defense, increases the player's resistance to being cursed, increases item discovery rate, increases damage of chaos weapons, allows you to kindle bonfires, which in turn increases your Estus flask use count, allows the summons of other players to help you fight online, but also allows you to invade another player's world online with the risk of having them do the same. In short, PvP. Much like Souls, you'll lose all your humanity if you die but can easily be taken back the same way how souls work. You gain humanity by defeating bosses, by defeating other players, by defeating a large number of enemies while the boss is still alive, by consuming humanity dropped by enemies, by buying it off merchants, but really just simply playing the game is enough. Dark Souls is difficult, but it's not unfair. You just need a little time to figure out its basic mechanics and its unique quirks. Most if not all souls-like games go by this philosophy, to explore, die, learn, and try again. And I hope this video was enough to teach you how to play Dark Souls Remastered. If you watched this whole video and you still find it somewhat incomplete, then click on this video more focused on the tips and tricks as you play through Dark Souls Remastered, including everything I learned, gathered, thought of, and found online. Like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me how many times do you think you've already died in Dark Souls? Because I've died a lot.